Liverpool have dropped out of Champions League football next season and are due for a rebuild this summer. It'll be Jurgen Klopp's eighth season as Liverpool boss, now the longest active tenured coach in the Premier League. And with a budget clear of 100 million, transfer rumors are already in full force. There are several players whose contracts have run out. James Milner will be joining Brighton, and Nabi Keita returning to the Bundesliga as he joins Werder Bremen. Perhaps the biggest goodbye goes to Roberto Firmino, who scored in his final Liverpool match. His future club's still yet to be decided, but he joins PSG in this save. Alexis McAllister is Liverpool's first confirmed summer signing and what a last 12 months he's had. Winning the 2022 World Cup with Argentina and playing a key role in Brighton's European qualification. Following a 10 goal, 2 assist Premier League season, I'm shocked that he only left on a 35 million transfer fee as several clubs were interested in his signature. I think that goes to show the appeal that Liverpool and Jurgen Klopp have on players. We're going to replicate that 35 million transfer fee in this save as McAllister's valuation is only set at 27 million. The rest of these summer signings will be limited to transfer rumors, starting with Kepren Turam. The son of Lilian Turam, the youngster is quickly becoming one of the most sought after midfielders in the world, currently competing with France at the under 21 European Championship. He predominantly plays as a number eight, but can also shift to a more defensive role. With high, high work rates though, it's no surprise that he can get forward and contribute to the attack. It's still up in the air how much Liverpool would need to spend to bring in Turam, but we're again going to replicate that 35 million fee. Slightly above Turam's evaluation of 34 million as he's got the exciting prospect status. Fans have been asking Liverpool to bring in more center midfielders and this could be the summer that sees them acquire multiple targets. Manu Kone is another French center midfielder competing at the under 21 European Championships and many believe that he is outperforming Turam at the current point in time. His 2021 move to München Gladbach has done wonders for him as his valuation has skyrocketed despite Gladbach not having a great 22-23 campaign. With experience in Liga and the Bundesliga, perhaps the Premier League could be his next move. A lower transfer fee here as Manu Kone signs on a 25 million deal. Another player with the exciting prospect status as his valuation is set at 20.5 million. Let's not forget about defenders and left-footed defenders in particular. Mickey Van de Ven will be our next transfer target. Another player that has had a fantastic last 12 months his move to Wolfsburg in 2021 didn't see him feature a lot, either due to not being selected in the squad or injury issues. But towards the end of the 21-22 campaign, he started to become a more regular part of the Wolfsburg team. He carried that forward to last year, where he made 30-plus appearances. It's going to be a battle for Liverpool to finalize this deal, as Spurs also have interest, but we managed to bring him in on another 25 million fee. This should put us clear of a total net spend of 100 million this summer, as Van de Veen is showing great potential with a 19 million valuation. There are some decisions to be made about what role Trent Alexander-Arnold will play in the Liverpool squad. He's become more of a center midfielder for the England national team, and that is exactly the sort of role I'd like to have him play in this save. The difficult part in doing so is that we need to bring in an alternative right back option. Some reports linking Kyle Walker to Liverpool. A more suitable transfer target, in my opinion, would be be Benjamin Pavard, who is heavily linked to a move away from Bayern due to lack of playtime. But ultimately, I settled on Marcus Llorente, who gives us a number of options being able to feature at right mid, center mid, and right back. With experience featuring at right mid in a three at the back system for Atleti, and also a few matches at right back for Spain, I think he could work in this Liverpool system. With a fantastic 2021 season that saw both double digit goals and assists, the former Real Madrid man has seen his appearances decrease the last two seasons. This might mean it's the perfect time for a move to the Premier League as Llorente signs for 50 million above his valuation of 38.5 million but we're signing a player that's in his prime it will take quite some time for us to complete that right back position change not even sure if we can have it done by the end of this rebuild we won't forget about our youth academy though a five-star four-star scout from England to begin with and we'll be adding a pair of five-star five-star scouts to cover all three scouting networks along with a homegrown talent to begin this save James Walker is a 62 rated striker from England 81 to 94 potential the six foot four left-footed player actually has attributes that would make him more suited to right wing perhaps as a future Mo Salah replacement but a common theme in this rebuild is going to be the rivalry with Manchester City as we start the save in the FA Community Shield which unfortunately Liverpool lost to start the season and we replicated that with a 3-2 loss despite late goals from Alexander-Arnold and Mo Salah it's going to be difficult to overturn City's dominance in the Premier 
Premier League. But hopefully with the signings we've made in this summer, we can challenge them for both success in the Premier League and in Europe. It's newly promoted Luton Town who we begin our season against. The new look starting 11 will still feature Jurgen Klopp's signature 4-3-3 formation. Alexander-Arnold making that shift to the midfield, now up to an 88 overall. That's a massive plus three increase to his rating just by changing positions. It is worth noting that Liverpool have opted for this three at the back formation that I would call a 3-2-2-3 or a 3-4-3. But whatever we choose to do, it seems to be working as we win our opening fixture 2-0 and we can start looking at our competition in the Europa League. Groups haven't yet been finalized, so I placed them with matches against PSV, Bodo Glimt, and Zurich. A lot of rumors linking Xavi Simons to a move away from PSV this summer, but for now he sits at a 79 rating. Patrick Berg, the top talent at Bodo Glimt, a 75 overall for him. And Zurich have some decent talents as well. Omaradzic, a 68 rated center back from Switzerland. Halfway through the season, we can check on results. In January, we find ourselves in a Premier League battle with Spurs. Pretty much equal on points with one fewer match played. And in the Europa League, we go undefeated, winning every single fixture and advancing to the knockout rounds. As far as the starting 11 goes, really only one major change in that Turam has taken over for Fabinho at the center defensive mid position. It'll probably take him the rest of the season to fully complete the change to center defensive mid. We did receive some amusing transfer offers, though. If Chelsea were to ever submit a bid over $100 million for Mo Salah, I think Liverpool would have to take it. Let me know in the comments section whether you would accept this deal. On the other hand, I think it's highly unlikely that Liverpool would let City he sign Alexander Arnold for just over a hundred million but we will see one departure from the club Nat Phillips joining Augsburg on a five million deal and with James Walker unsettled it's time for him to get promoted to the senior squad he's up to a 72 rating at right wing before the Europa League our round of 16 fixture will pit us against Ajax they, of course, are a top team with some high potential players. Plenty to choose from, but I've gone with Steven Bergvine, an 81-rated left winger that just saw his move from Spurs back to Ajax and his former club. They stood no chance, though, as we put five goals past them at the Johan Cruyff Arena and a 3-2 win at Anfield. Seasons advance 8-2 on aggregate up against Sevilla in the quarterfinals. Alex tells his loan move kind of went under the radar for me, although he isn't quite at the rating he used to be. Still a good talent for Sevilla at an 80 overall. A 2-1 win at Anfield puts us in a comfortable position going into the away fixture, but Sevilla, known for what they can do in the Europa League, get a shock 5-0 win and knock us out of European competitions for this season. Now all of our focus can go on domestic performances as we're into May and have the FA Cup final against Aston Villa. A familiar face for our opponents, Philippe Coutinho, who remembers the season he had in 2016 and 2017. Double digit goals and a fair number of assists to add to that. Coutinho did actually manage to score in the fixture, but it's Mo Salah's brace that allow us to win 2-1 and it's our first trophy of the rebuild. This is exactly where we want to be, challenging for all trophies and setting a message that Liverpool can challenge every season. But we'll fast forward to the final Premier League match day against Fulham and our fate is in our hands. A win will secure us the Premier League title and that is certainly needed considering our manager rating is dropping. We're fresh off the FA Cup victory, so we can treat decision day in the Premier League like another cup final. No doubt we have the better starting 11, but I won't completely discount Fulham as they've surprised a lot of teams this year. But every storyline has led up to this with our final fixture being played at Anfield and has having a full strength starting 11. You've got to expect great things. You can see here with Spurs just one point behind us, we cannot manage to drop points and it's Fulham that do open things up with a goal courtesy of James and in the 34th minute it's just a defensive error from our end I'm not sure what our central defenders are doing pushing out wide because they lead to another goal from Fulham doubling their lead and this had me a bit worried fortunately there was still a lot of time left in this one and even just a few moments later it's Hakpo that plays the ball across to Mo Salah we're working together to find the perfect goal scoring opportunity and Salah has been our leader as far as goals go the high press will get us the ball back and Salah bursting by the Fulham defenders. He's also going to round the keeper and he's going to equalize things just before the halftime break. This is the sort of response we needed and of course it was one of our experienced players in Salah who led by example. We'll get a score update and Spurs are playing against Manchester City so it is very much possible that they could drop points as well. But we'll get into the second half and it's going to be Luis Diaz who finds Hakpo 
the low shot driven across goal. And finally, for the first time in this match, we have a lead and we're starting to celebrate with our manager there. The team morale is back to a high and the fans are certainly having a great time. Now it's McAllister, our new signing, who gets by the Fulham defense. He's going to add to the goals today. With a two goal cushion, you've got to think that we're not going to be dropping points today. So we're going to make a substitution. Hakpo, having scored a goal, definitely deserved a bit of a rest and not a bad player to be brought on with Darwin Nunez. He's actually going to get involved straight away. A decent save from Bernd Leno, but Darwin manages to pick up the rebound, adding a fifth to our goal scoring tally. Another question for you Liverpool fans, who do you see starting at that striker center forward position? Is it going to be Nunez or is it going to be Hakpo? Well, that'll bring a close to this first season in this Liverpool rebuild. Two trophies is not a bad start, but what I'm most happy about is that we'll be back in the Champions League next year. It's fair to say that Liverpool is back to winning trophies. A final look at the Premier League table did indeed see Spurs drop points on the final match day. But for the relegation spots, it's Burnley, Sheffield United, and Luton Town that see the drop to the championship. The newly promoted teams see the drop and the newly relegated teams will also see promotion. Leicester and Southampton earning those automatic promotion spots and Leeds winning the championship playoffs. Of course, we saw the season start with a loss to Manchester City in the FA Community Shield, rebounding with a win in the FA Cup against Aston Villa. And for the Carabao Cup, it was Spurs that defeated Chelsea 2-1 in the final. Real Madrid defeating Eintracht Frankfurt on penalties in the UEFA Super Cup, and it's Barcelona that get the win against Manchester City in the Champions League. Spurs had a trophy with a win in the Europa League final against Juventus, and Basel defeating Villarreal in the Conference League final. I think you could tell from the game highlights how big of a part Mo Salah played in this Liverpool squad. 38 goals across 56 appearances. It made him the second best goal scorer in the Premier League, only behind Erling Haaland. Cody Hakpo put up some great numbers as well, 18 assists from 47 appearances. However, it was McAllister who led us in Premier League assists, equal at the top with St. Maximan. Our defense also playing a big part with Alisson having twice as many clean sheets as the next best goalkeeper and leading the Prem. We'll get an update on James Walker, who spent half a season on loan at Wolfsburg, going up plus 14 in his rating with a position change and also just some growth while on loan. But some newly promoted talents include Michael Mason, a 64 rated left winger from Wales, 80 to 94 potential for him. Jack White is a goalkeeper from Ireland, 64 rated with 90 to 94 potential. Only one expiring contract, the only German player at Liverpool is Paul Glatzel. He used to have some decent potential in career mode, but I don't think he's going to be reaching that these days in this save. But we'll close out the season with a 60 manager rating, hopefully some things to build upon in season two. It's another summer transfer window where Liverpool can hopefully look to keep building upon an already strong squad. We've got board expectations to match that looking to win pretty much every competition. Winning the Premier League, winning the FA Cup, and winning the Champions League. Our transfer budget has seen a big rise though, at least 100 million higher, up to 250 million. And offers are starting to come in. I think this Real Madrid one is one that we would need to think about considering that Darwin Nunez doesn't even make it into our current starting 11. But for now, will keep him as a backup striker. Thiago, though, with his contract expiring, will be joining Juventus on a 37 and a half million transfer fee. Joel Matip, I think a return to the Bundesliga is very likely as he departs to Bayern Munich on an 18.5 million deal. Tsumakis has done well when called upon, but I think he could fit into most Premier League sides and maybe wants more play time as he departs to Aston Villa for 12.5 million. There are some rumors linking Nicolo Barella to Anfield and just coming off of a Champions League final, I probably put him in the category of a top three player for his role. As a Mazala occupying space in the midfield and creating chances, I think his work rates would be perfect for a Jurgen Klopp system at Liverpool. And this is a statement signing. We're looking to make significant progress in the Champions League, even going on to win it. So why not add a player that was just featuring in the Champions League final? Our biggest transfer to date in this rebuild, Barella signing on a 90 million fee. Honestly, not that much more than a 74 and a half million valuation. Any further additions will likely be for squad depth, and I want to keep adding defenders and versatile ones at that with Armel Belakochup. He was one of the positives in a relegated Southampton side. I was surprised that he only moved from Bochum to Southampton for 11 million. As far as what his future looks like, I'm not sure. He could certainly move to another Premier League team or maybe even return back to the Bundesliga. But for 15 million, this is a good deal, and like 
likely what he would end up going for if he decides to depart Southampton. He's valued only at 6.5 million, but he is showing great potential and has a bright future. Gabri Vega is one of the most sought after center midfield talents in the world right now, and I don't think his rating in career mode fully justifies the contributions he made last season. With 11 goals and 4 assists for a Celta Vigo side that finished 13th place in La Liga, some big clubs are linked with him. I think Chelsea have to be one of the leaders. They would probably use him alongside Enzo Fernandez for a play style that is similar to Mason Mount. He's great at finding pockets of space and breaking down defenses with through balls and smart off the ball movements. There is no way Vega would be leaving on this low of a transfer fee, at least in my opinion. 10 million is what we signed him for and he's valued at 9 million, showing an exciting prospect status. With Samaka's departure, we need to sign a new backup left back and Milos Kerkes, after just two years years with Azet is looking at a potential move away. The biggest links right now for the left back that has featured for Hungary is with Feyenoord and Benfica. I think Benfica would be a great landing spot for the former AC Milan Youth Academy player. Azet probably looking for a fee in the range of 20 to 25 million though. We'll meet the lower end of that evaluation as Kirk has signs for 20 million. Another player showing great potential is he's valued at 13.5 million. A couple of matches against Spurs to start this season. The first one being in the FA Community Shield. Another 3-2 scoreline but this time we were victorious as Luis Diaz scores the winner in the 80th minute. Just a few months after lifting the Premier League title, we are FA Community Shield champions and hopefully this will be the first of many trophies that we accumulate this season. Just one week later and we've got our opening Premier League fixture against Spurs. This is the starting 11, just the one change as Barella shifts into the left center mid role and McAllister featuring off the bench. And everything seems to be clicking for us, Barella scoring in his opener and a defensive clean sheet. As for the Champions League, our group will consist of RB Leipzig, Villarreal, and RFC Surang. Imeric Laporte linked with a potential move away from Manchester City. I'm not sure if Leipzig would be the place he goes to, but he still features at an 87 overall. Kochu, another center midfielder that a lot of big clubs are looking to sign, has moved to Villarreal in this save as he's at an 83 rating. Surang are by far the underdogs in our group, but they've got Timothy Martin. Not often do you see a player from Luxembourg in career mode, but he's at a 63 overall. We're not even at the halfway mark of the season, and we've already received a Manager of the Month award. An unbeaten November will put us in a very strong league standing just one month shy of January. We'll check on results in January 2024, and we've kept our place at the top of the Premier League. However, City have closed the gap. We're only ahead now due to goal difference. As far as the Champions League goes, though, we also go undefeated. Five wins and a single draw. That draw coming in our final Champions League match day. Starting 11-wise, no concerns. Really, the only downside of this season so far is that Diogo Jota is looking to leave the club, which is a shame because at an 87 rating, he's going to be dearly missed. But I found it very interesting that it was Jurgen Klopp's former club that he managed, Borussia Dortmund, that came through with a swap deal that included Jurian Timber, which Liverpool have had some links to. So it will be a 22.5 million deal that sees Jota leave to the Bundesliga, and in return, we will be securing the transfer of Yurion Timber to add even more squad depth at center back. Our first opponent in the knockout rounds of the Champions League will be PSV. We matched against them in the Europa League group stage, and Xavi Simons continues to grow in his rating at an 82 overall. But we put three goals past PSV in the away fixture. Another three goals in the home leg sees his advance 6-1 to one on aggregate. Up against Inter in the Champions League quarterfinals. The former club of Barella, they managed to sign Declan Rice as seemingly a replacement instead of him making a Premier League transfer. But a 1-0 win at Anfield and a 1-1 draw away from home sees us advance to the semifinals against Barcelona. Otaro Martinez is another fantastic talent from Inter. He would be a great striker signing for Barca. And it was a high scoring home fixture. 3-3 three is how things end. We do get another three goals in the away leg and only allow the one to put us through to the Champions League final 6-4 on aggregate. Our opponent for said final will be FC Bayern. There's a lot to get done before we can play that Champions League final though. It's a fixture against Nottingham Forest that could secure us the Premier League title. With the FA Community Shield already under our belts, we're looking to add another trophy, and it's a 3-1 win, and a Luis Diaz brace that'll see Virgil lift another trophy for Liverpool. Back-to-back -back Premier League winners, and once again, we are celebrating in front of our home fans at Anfield. Just days later, we've got a cup final. This is the FA Cup final against Arsenal, another club 
that is looking to become the top team in England. But it's another slight victory, two to one. Goals from Barella and Sala will give us our third trophy of the season, all three coming in England. These are great achievements, but the trophy that we want to win will come in the Champions League. It's the 25th of May where we will battle it out against Bayern. A team that Klopp has a lot of familiarity with from his time in the Bundesliga, but also a team that has some ties to Liverpool. Before we talk about that though, we'll review all results and we finished five points clear of City for the Premier League title. Relegation spots this season going to Crystal Palace, Brighton and Fulham. Burnley and Sheffield United securing the automatic promotion spots to the Premier League and it's Luton Town that also see the return to England's top flight. As for cup results, we started the season with an FA Community Shield victory, follow that up with a win in the FA Cup. The Carabao Cup though, we saw a fourth round exit to Leicester with Manchester City defeating Spurs in the final. Spurs also lost in the UEFA Super Cup to Barcelona on penalties. Leipzig winning the Europa League against Newcastle and Juventus securing the Conference League title against Chelsea. Another season where Salah was the top goal scorer on the club or at least equal with Luis Diaz. Diaz actually having more Premier League goals to win the Golden Boot Award. Salah does have the most assists though, 19 from 60 appearances short of what Sterling managed to do at Chelsea though in the Premier League. Couple of loan updates for our Youth Academy promoted talents. Mason up plus eight to a 72 rating, Walker up plus four to an 80 overall, and Jack White going up plus eight to a 72 rating. Now, as far as those Liverpool connections to Bayern, we saw the season start with a Matip transfer to the Bundesliga, but just the year prior, Sadio Mane also saw a summer move to Bayern. I'm unsure of whether his future will stay at the club though. But anyways, we are ready to battle out in the Champions League, a chance for four trophies on the year. With Manchester City's Champions League victory, they became the most recent club to secure a treble, including domestic and cup titles, along with either the European Cup or Champions League. We're looking to become the next English team to do that. As we start things off on a positive note, the header being cleared off the line. So a close call as a match stays level, but in the 45th minute, we once again find another chance inside the box. Manu Neuer making some fantastic saves to deny Nicolo Barella and keep the match level. We need to make the most of these opportunities because Bayern only need a split moment to score a goal. We're moving forward to the second half and this time it's Hakpo trying to find Diaz over the top. He managed to get a touch on the ball but Neuer quick to come off of his line. Just before the end of regulation it's most solid to get by two Bayern defenders playing the ball in the middle to Cody Hakpo and with the outside of his foot he is going to score a last second goal in this Champions League final. Bayern won't even have time to play after kickoff. So in the most dramatic fashion, this 23-24 Liverpool side will become the 11th team to win the treble as we close out this rebuild.